Now let's do example two. The heights of women in the United States are approximately normally distributed with a mean of 64.8 inches. The heights of 11 players on a recent roster of the WNBA team are these in inches. Is there sufficient evidence to say that this sample is so much taller than the population that this difference cannot reasonably be attributed to chance alone? Well, now let's do some hypothesis testing. So here, um, our null hypothesis is that our sample is just like regular women, right? So the mean is 64.8. The alternative, and I'm just going to use a two-tailed alternative here, is that they are not like this population. Um, we can probably guess by using common sense that they're on average taller, uh, but we'll do a two-tailed uh, two test. It's actually more conservative. It's safer to go with a two-tailed test. So here, we'll make alpha equal to 0.05 and uh, it'll be two-tailed. And let's draw the SDOM here. So here, we might draw these boundaries, and because it's two-tailed, this is 0 0.025, 0 0.025, oh, oh. And here it's 0.95, right? So all together it adds up to 0.1. All right. So now that we have this, um, can we figure out the t? Well, in order to figure out the t, we need to have the degrees of freedom. If you go to the download and go to example two, I've listed this data here for you. And we could actually find the degrees of freedom here. So here I'll put step three so that we know where we are. Uh, in step three, we need degrees of freedom, and that would be count of all of these guys, or gals, minus one. And so we have 11 players, 10 degrees of freedom. And let's find the critical T. The critical T would be T uh, inverse, right? Because we know the probability, the two-tailed probability, 0.05, and the degrees of freedom. And that gives us the positive critical T. So that's uh, positive 2.23 and negative 2.23. Those are our critical boundaries. Anything outside of that, we reject the null. Let's go to step four. So in step four, we could start dealing with the sample. So let's, uh, let's figure out the sample T. In order to do that, we need the x bar minus the mu divided by standard error. Right? And so we need to know the sample's um, average, so x bar. We also need to know mu. We also need to know standard error, right? And standard error is going to be s divided by the square root of n. I like to write all these things down because it helps me figure out what we need. It's like a shopping list, you know? So here, um, I definitely know I need S. So now that I have written all these things down, I could just calculate them. So I need the average. I also need the mu, which I already know from the, prop, from, oh, from the problem, 64.8. Get my Excel back. All right. 64.8.8. And I need to get my standard error, but before I do that, I need to get S, standard deviation. And then once I have standard deviation, I could take that and divide it by the square root of N, which is 11. So that's my standard error. And once I have all of these ingredients, now I could assemble my T, which is x bar minus mu divided by standard error. And I get uh, 7.97. So that's, that's way higher than 2.2. Uh, um, so I'm pretty sure I can, step five, reject the null. 
And so if I go back to my problem, then um, let me see. Is there sufficient evidence to say that this sample is so much taller than the population that this difference cannot be reasonably attributed to chance alone? I should say yes, because um, when, when you're way out here, your probability that you belong to this um, chance distribution is so small that, um, that it's reasonable for us to say it probably came from a different population that the sample came from a different population.